Good morning. This is going to be a review for the Hitachi cordless, brushless, 18 volt, 15 gauge angle nailer. Model number NT1865DMA. Right out of the box, my first impressions are there's a bit of a problem here. Let me show you. If you take that nailer and hold it like you normally would, a nailer, you notice that casting line right down the middle of the plastic, right? So I'm holding it straight up and down. See, brushless is straight up and down. But if you notice, look where look where the look where the uh the shoe is, the uh you know, the part that presses on your piece. This part right here it's actually tilted at an angle good one Hitachi good one so you're holding it straight but yet you have to make sure that you're looking where you want to go with respect to the depressible piece at the end okay uh, this is not an optical illusion they they actually it's tilted at an angle for a finished nail or of all things so, in case you think you're seeing things as some sort of flaw or something, you can look right there and see that the body, the plastic, is centered, but the tip of the nail gun is tilted a few degrees, in this case, to the left. It should be, we should be looking at it straight on. They're not in alignment. So, what's going on? Well, Hitachi in their infinite wisdom or cheapness whatever you want to call it use the same tool body on all of their uh, cordless nailers and there's a few of them uh, what do I do with the instruction book as you see here Hitachi made a uh, three nailers out of the same body. One's a 15 gauge, the other one's a smaller gauge. I forget, but you get the point. The one we're talking about today is all the way in here on the left. So they use the same body, meaning the plastic part, for all three nailers. So what that means is there's some interesting, stupid stuff going on as a result. Namely this, you hold it straight, straight up and down, like looking out down the barrel of a gun and the tip of your gun is cockeyed. The reason they did this, again, because they use the same body. So instead of trying to clear where the, the motor is here where my finger is pointing, that's where the motor is. On the other ones where the, um, the nails load straight, it clears this. So instead of doing a different body style, they just kind of tilted the whole firing mechanism a few degrees to the right to fit all this together so that's the first uh, issue uh, Hitachi seriously I mean actually have somebody that nails nails into things test your stuff before you actually make it and sell it that would be a good idea so you don't have a nail gun which is cockeyed okay so needless to say this is going to take some adjusting or getting used to if you uh, decide to go this route uh, another interesting feature of them deciding to use the same body is that the belt hook is not reversible on this model as you can see down there there's a belt hook on one side and on the other models it's all reversible you can take that hook off this four screws take it and put it around on the other side but if we look closely because of the shared design the the place where it mounts is actually under here hard to see but I'll try to show you see how you have this flat area where my thumb is that's where the belt hook mounts on that side See the same flat area where my forefinger is? That's where it can mount 
on the other models. However, the uh, nail loading mechanism is in the way. There's zero way to put the hook on the other side on this model. Ryobi, when they designed their 15 gauge angle nail of the P330, has a provision for a hook right here on this uh, nail guide. So you can, you can t uh, still hook it. Now if you're saying this is no big deal, this is for right handers. So you pick up the gun like this and then you hook it like that. Just like you would a drill. Your hook would be right there where the nail guide is and you pick it back up, right handed, go. So it's one of those things where you gotta twist it around and play games and have it mounted and, and it's just a, a waste of energy. So again, uh, as far as the, uh, the design of this thing, it's clearly an afterthought. It's clearly uh, jammed together to make work. Uh, it's not its own dedicated model as far as the design goes. It is, um, I don't want to say hastily put together, but they definitely said, no, nope, we're not going to change the body style and make it happen. You know, for whatever budget reasons. But the stuff is so glaring. I can forgive the belt hook, no big deal, even though that is awesome and ergonomics and fatigue is everything. But what you can't forgive is the intuitiveness of uh, picking this thing up and having your line of sight be off by that much. Again, I'm holding this dead center, and as you can see, the end is going up to the right. So you're going to have to get used to this. You know, you're going to have to, like a gangsta. You know, like in one of them gangster movies, hold it to the side, like, yeah, what, what? You know, or you're just going to have to get used to it. But it's weird, and it's unnecessarily weird for a uh, nail gun of this price. Okay, this is the charger, the Hitachi charger. It just went off, which is a miracle, because it, sound it sounds like an uh, aircraft carrier idling uh, in the middle of the ocean. It's, it's very loud. There's a fan that helps cool it. I get it, you know, it's just very loud, so be prepared for that. I'm not going to whine about that. Uh helps keep it cool, but it is loud and annoying. But again, I'm not going to whine about it, so let's take out the gun and test it. Pardon me, I mean, let's take out the battery, put it in the gun, and then test it. And I'm going to test the power on a piece of wood here. And you'll see how the power is. Obviously, it's in bump fire mode. Yep. So, as you see, plenty of power. I didn't sink that nail, but that's my fault. But plenty of power in that respect. And I have it dialed all the way down. And these are inch and a half, 15 gauge nails. Okay, here's the sound of that fan charging the Hitachi battery. A little loud. Um, that shouldn't be an issue for most people. It's just not silent like most other charges you see here. Um, just keep that in mind if that's going to bother you. And of course, with the sound of that fan, I uh, don't know how long that's going to last. <laughs> Probably not long. So uh, keep that in mind too. Okay, let's go over the uh, performance of the nailer. The uh, power is not an issue. There's plenty of power. I'll give you an example. This is going to be in bump fire mode again. Uh, there is a ramp up time. I know it says zero ramp up time, but there is a ramp up time. Not that it matters. Just know that it's a marketing gimmick to say zero ramp up time. It's less than a second. Uh, so for the ability being cordless, it's negligible, obviously. So that shouldn't be an issue. There's plenty of power. You can kind of control it by not pushing as hard. That nail's a little proud. But generally, if you push on it, it actually sink too deep, and this setting is all the way back, uh, meaning all the way shallow. 
just experiment and you'll uh, you'll figure it out okay now we're going to talk about how this nail gun works for those that are interested anyway the way these work is off a rack and pinion system just like in your car the motors the motors vertical the pinions vertical the motor and pinion are vertical the rack is horizontal and the rack is connected directly to the piston so the motor is vertical and it spins this way okay and the rack has two teeth on it so the piston basically has teeth on it and so when this spins the rack goes back this way and which of course is the piston same thing rack piston compressing the air that compresses it just enough for the pinion gear to slip it has a section where there's no teeth in it so once it turns a certain point there's no teeth it can't grip anymore that's when it's back fully compressed then there's no teeth and then it slips forward and it fires the firing pin which then fires the nail so it's a real simple uh, setup okay next we're gonna go over some uh, interesting politics is this Hitachi uh, nailer the same as a Milwaukee the current Milwaukee 18 volt nailers they look strikingly similar they have similar features right on down to how the electronics work such as you push the one button and hold it to turn it on and then you push and hold the nail the mode selector for sequential or bump fire that system is exactly the same as in the um, milwaukee versions of the milwaukee 18 volt nailers that are out at the time of this video coincidence Probably not. It's probably the same exact um, internals as a Mitsubishi, or not Mitsubishi, but Milwaukee nailer. They have three nailers, uh, I believe 18, 16, and 15, just like the Hitachi series of these nailers, 18, 16, and 15. So they are probably the same exact nailer with some minor changes uh, to the body, if at all. Hitachi shows and publicizes a parts list for theirs. Milwaukee doesn't. Suspicious. One company had to not show a parts list because they would be identical or close to identical. So here's a story on these nailers. Basically, uh, cordless nailers are fairly new. But uh, the first one was a, a flywheel system that DeWalt used. Okay. And the second one was the uh, rack and pinion, as you see here, system that Ryobi first used. Um, both, m both systems are patented. Patents usually at last 20 years. The company that sells the uh, nail gun is not the owner of the patent. The inventor is. And from what I can research, it's a Chinese, you know, Chinese guy somewhere in China, Chinese inventor. And then they license their invention to the highest bidder, which in the case of the first series of rack and pinion guns was the Ryobi series of airstrike nailers. Uh, it, that 20 year period hasn't expired, so Ryobi and the inventor and or the inventor of that original patent is licensing the rack and pinion technology to other companies. Right now, we got Hitachi and Milwaukee, which, again, I suspect is the same exact nail gun. Um, DeWalt, on the other hand, has the flywheel system. Whoever invented that uh, system, which, again, was a Chinese person licensed in China, licensed it, licensed it, licensed it to uh, DeWalt, and I believe Bosch, but that might have been a hybrid system. But anyway... Uh, the Walt seems to be the only uh, licensee of the flywheel version of these cordless nailers. And then came the hybrid, the hybrid system uh, that would use a cartridge and a flywheel system or a cartridge and an air system. That might be a way around the patents or that may be a way 
of um, uh, working within the patents to make to make it different. I suspect that it's um, you know when you have when you had the older models that had the fuel cell, that was their way of copying the design of either this rack and pinion system or the flywheel system without uh, violating the original patents on these. You get what I'm saying? So when you see those uh, hybrid systems that use a battery and some sort of fuel cell, I think that's their way of getting in the market, those companies getting in the market without violating the original patent holders. But right now it seems that Ryobi was the first to take the rat and, rack and pinion um, system of nailers with their airstrike series. They were the first to take that and then um, th and sell it. Um, now the inventor is is licensing that technology to Hitachi and Milwaukee because they're the same exact type of setup and the patent has not expired on it. So whoever invented this, the original inventor, uh, is licensing it to Hitachi, Ryobi, Milwaukee. It's all the same technology. DeWalt with the flywheel seems to be the only one and the inventor only licensed it to DeWalt. And at this stage, you know, other companies will get into this but they have to bid uh, on the license uh, from these two inventors or they have to go around it with uh, some new system or a hybrid system and that could take a while uh, so I think what you'll see is a lot of clones for the next eh, it's the patents probably in 2010 we're in 2017 uh, so what's that seven years have gone by so you got you still got 13 years to go before the patent fully expires and you see these things everywhere by every company until then, it's going to go to the highest bidder. The prices will be high. And there there may be limitations on uh, which companies offer a rack and pinion or a flywheel st style nailer. Ah, with that said, the inventor eventually, or the holder, of the, yeah, the inventor, the holder of the original patents of both systems, the flywheel and the rack and pinion, They'll eventually reach the uh, kind of maximum of the market that the market will bear at a time, and they're going to have to license out even when the patent is still in, in effect. They're going to have to start licensing it, licensing it out to other companies to remain profitable, especially when they know that the license is going to expire soon and that they need to get cash in as much as they can before it expires. So it's going to be like a gradual, well, let's go this way, gradual increase of seeing similar nailers to the rack and pinion system and the flywheel system until that patent expires. So you'll see, you'll start to see more of these as the uh, the inventors start to license license it off to uh, to make their buck before the patent expires. Ryobi was cashed in because they were the first with the airstrike series. They took a risk and it paid off because those got good reviews. But Ryobi took a risk by trying to license it. And uh, they made out. Uh, and the rest is just whatever. Um, so that's the politics of this. You're probably, if, you, if you're if uh, going to get a Milwaukee or have a Milwaukee system, think about the Hitachi. The differences are probably only cosmetic, ergonomic. But the internals, I'm sure, are exactly the same. Someone proved me wrong by posting a parts list and compare it to the Hitachi series of these nailers. Their parts list, which is online, you can look at it and compare it with a Milwaukee if you can find it. But these are the exact same nailers. So keep that in mind if you already have one system, either the Hitachi or the Milwaukee, that it's the same thing. However, well, I'll, let me uh, pause for a second. Okay, I'll give my final thoughts on the Hitachi 18 volt. 1865 DMA cordless finish nail are made in China, uh, which doesn't even mean anything these days because everything's made in China unless you luck out and get something made in Taiwan. But there's different grades. Anyway, final thoughts. Uh, ergonomics need improvement. I wish it didn't share the body style with the other three nailers. The Milwaukee versions of these did the exact same thing on their on their 15 gauge. It's cocked all weird and doesn't have can't reverse the belt hook um, overall the power is plenty it's there is ramp up time 
There is ramp up time, though it's negligible. Uh, the light should be up here, like the uh, Ryobi airstrikes on both sides, in line with where you're firing. And on this model, it's down here somewhere. Lights up the area, but not as good as the Ryobi. Ryobi is the winner on ergonomics, hands down. Uh, however, this has more power and probably is going to have more reliability. This belt hook that doesn't re reverse, you can see, this is what I was ranting about earlier. There's two open screw holes down in there. Whoop, probably just broke it. There's two open uh, screw holes down in there to receive the belt hook, but you can't reverse it. Um, the battery's good, it's light. Uh, you get used to it being uh, weird and everything, but uh, overall, I'd give this four stars out of five. Not perfect, but more than good enough for what it is. Reliability, time will tell. Um, and that's all there is. And that's all there is to it. Let's fire it one more time. See if I broke it for good. Oops! I got to turn it on first. Got to hold down, then sequential. Works just fine. Took a little drop like that without issue.